Church. Welcome to this fourth Sunday in Advent. We are excited to worship with you today. Just a few notes again if you want to prepare for our worship service today to have your candles ready, your chrismons ready, and your communion elements ready, the three C's that have gathered us and led us through our Advent season here together. Um, a note, too, just to let you know that our organ is out of order right now, and so uh, we are missing that musical instrument uh, for the Advent and Christmas season. We'll keep you tuned on the progress of getting that repaired, uh, but know that um, that is why you're not hearing Char on the organ during this time. We gather our hearts and minds today as we, we witness to how God is at work in and through our lives God gathers us just as we are in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's worship together. Come to you in worship, seeking your light for our lives. You who created the universe and set the stars in their courses. You who promised descendants to Abraham that outnumber those stars. You who set a star to guide foreign travelers to Bethlehem. Enlighten us now with the promise of your son Jesus, our bright and morning star. The light shines in the darkness, and the, and the darkness, darkness has, has not, not overcome, overcome it. it. Week 4, Witnessing, with text from Matthew chapter 5. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, put it under a bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. We light our fourth candle as we spend time witnessing. Just as you prepared the shepherds to tell of your son's birth, Lord, you have also given each of us a story to tell, too. As we approach the celebration of your coming, embolden us to share with one another the ways we have seen you in our lives, that the love with which you have blessed us may be a blessing to others. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. O come, O come, O Lord of might, as to your tribes on Sinai's height. In ancient times you gave the law, in cloud and majesty, 
rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O Israel. Well, good morning, church. Can you believe it's Advent 4? means that this is the week that we get to celebrate God's greatest gift to give to all of us, the best gift, even better than the gifts underneath the tree, the gift of Jesus being born into our lives. And so this Advent 4, we have two more chrismons to put on the tree. And um, the first one is the manger. Away in a manger, no crib for his bed. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay. This, these mangers you can cut out and make in chrismons. My family and I wrap them with some wrapping paper in the middle because it's the best gift ever. And um, uh, we made these and we're going to hang them on our tree to remind us that how God sent Jesus to just a lonely manger in with the cattle and the sheep to be born for us. And so the manger is one of those and there are mangers and there's animals all over here on our chrismon tree here at church. And the last chrismon I chose today uh, was the praying hands chrismon. And uh, these two praying hands uh, just represent that we can give thanks and praise to God for all that God continues to do for us. And um, you'll see on your screen that there is a way to remember prayer in this five-finger prayer. And I'm just going to go through those up on your screen with you today. For our thumb, which is closest to our lives, to our bodies, that we pray for our loved ones, join me in this prayer. Dear Lord, today we pray for those who are closest to us, our friends and family. May they remain safe, happy, and healthy. Watch over them as they go about their day. In Jesus' name, amen. The second finger is uh, the finger that we pray for our teachers. Pray with me here. Heavenly Father, today we pray for those who teach us, instruct us, and heal us. Please give them support and wisdom to give direction to others. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The third finger, the middle finger here, is for our leaders. And join me in prayer. Lord Jesus, today we pray for our leaders, whether they are leaders in our class, our school, or our community. Each of them need God's guidance. Support them in their important roles. In Jesus' name, amen. The fourth finger uh, is uh, the finger of uh, thinking about the poor or the sick, and so we pray together. Loving God, today we pray for those who are in need. Please look after them, heal them, and guide them in your love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And the last one, your uh, little pinky finger, is praying for ourselves. Let's pray. Dear God, today I pray for me. Help me to make good choices, to make the most of my learning, and to be grateful for all that I have. Thank you for giving me Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. So these praying hands are a reminder that we pray for our loved ones, for our teachers, for our leaders, those who are sick, and ourselves. And these praying hands is a way that we can give thanks and praise to God each and every day. So to wrap up, here are our last chrismons to hang on your tree, the manger and the praying hands reminding us of the great gifts that Jesus brings each and every day. Come the long expected Jesus born to set thy people free. sins and fears release us let us find our rest in thee Israel strength and consolation hope of all the earth awar dear desire 
joy of every longing heart. Born thy people to deliver, born a child and yet a king. forever now thy gracious kingdom bring by thine own eternal spirit rule in all our hearts alone by thine all sufficient to thy glorious throne. Come, thou long-expected Jesus, born to set thy people free. From our sins and release us, let us find our rest in Thee. Israel, strength and consolation, hope of all the earth Thou art. Dear desire of every child and yet a king, born to reign in us forever, now the gracious kingdom bring, by thine own eternal spirit rule in all our hearts alone. to the glorious throne, raise us to the glorious throne. People of God, let us join together in prayer. Father God, there is no miracle as grand as birth. As we prepare for the coming of your Son, Jesus, create in us new life. Transform us so that we may reflect the light of your Son and become beacons of goodness, kindness, compassion, generosity, honesty, patience, and peace. For the sake of the one whose name brings deliverance and life to all the world, Jesus Christ, Infant King. Amen. Our scripture text today comes to us from the first chapter of Luke, beginning with the 26th verse. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. 
He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me, For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. According to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I tell you, that section of text with Mary and Gabriel and Elizabeth, every time I read that, it just fills me with wonder and awe. This is the beginning of the moment that we've been waiting for. The beginning of the story, the greatest story ever told, right? The story of Jesus beginning here with this message delivered to Mary and the celebration between these two women. Though, of course, it's not really the beginning. The beginning was in the beginning, right? We've, that's one of the things that this narrative lectionary that we follow does so well is covering the whole scope of the biblical story, revealing it to be a continuous arc from Genesis all the way through. And so what we get to now is the culmination of a plan long in the making. As we read in John's Gospel, the Word, Jesus, was in the beginning and the world came into being through him. But now, now we approach the moment of the true incarnation. It is an awe-inspiring moment to think of everything that led up to this. And now here we are, approaching the promise of Christmas. It's a powerful moment, a powerful time. And it really makes me think too about maybe another one of the characters in the story who doesn't get quite as much airtime, understandably, uh, as Mary. But you got to wonder about Gabriel in this, right? This angel who is sent bearing this message to Mary. Now, I wonder how Gabriel felt in this moment. I I don't know if angels actually feel, right? I don't know if angels have the same emotions that we do, but just imagine with me for a moment, right? Take a moment to indulge in that fanciful imagination of what it might be like to be Gabriel in that moment, knowing that 
This is the beginning of the culmination. This is where everything is coming together. And you have been given a message to start it off. You have been given this message to witness to, right? To bring to Mary, the one who is going to bring the incarnation into the world in flesh and blood, and you get to be the one. You are the one, the resp- one with the responsibility of telling her. <sighs> talk about an honor, talk about stress, talk about amazingness, right, that comes into that moment of Gabriel and Mary having this conversation. This is just an absolute beautiful moment. Now, I think it's also interesting to look at the dialogue that happens, right, between Gabriel and Mary as he comes and appears to her. There's this exchange between the two of them, this dialogue, and in it, we hear some of the same language that we hear any time there's an angelic visitor to someone in Scripture, right? We begin this, 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 uh, this conversation with Gabriel saying, do not be afraid. Again and again, whenever we have these messages from God, that's the message proclaimed time and again. Do not be afraid. I bring you tidings of great joy. I bring you the blessings of God. You are blessed. Do not be afraid. God is with you. That's a message we can all take from too, right? The idea that God is with us, no matter how dark the world might seem, wherever or whenever we are, God is with us. Do not be afraid. And so they continue this conversation with Gabriel, sharing this message with Mary that you have been chosen to be the bearer of the incarnation, that the Savior of the world will come Come into into physical form through you. That's an important and incredible statement to make. And Mary questions him about that, right? Because she says, well, that's, I mean, I know you're an angel, but surely you understand how human biology works, right? There are some things that have to happen for someone to have a baby, and that hasn't happened to me yet. And Gabriel explains that, no, this is going to be something special. This is going to be the incarnational virgin birth. For while it's true that for such a thing to happen would be impossible for mortals, he says something that that looks ahead to what Jesus says later. Nothing is impossible for God. Nothing is impossible for God. If you're a common reader of Scripture, that phrase might catch your memory as well. Because Jesus says that when he's talking about the camel going through the eye of the needle and how it is that a person can be saved. And his disciples say, well, if that's the case, who can be saved? None of us can live up to this. And Jesus echoes Gabriel, nothing is impossible for God. This is a theme throughout Scripture, right? And here we have it in this conversation between Mary and Gabriel. And so he explains to her how this is about to happen, how this will come about. And then we see one of, in my opinion, one of the most beautiful statements of faith that we have in Scripture where Mary says, let it be so. May it be what you have said, yes, I say, to this thing that God wants to do. Yes, I will play my role. It is difficult to overstate the implications that that would go along with, right? What is Mary saying yes to in this moment? I mean, clearly she doesn't know everything because we, we're looking at this from 2,000 years. We know who Jesus was and what he was up to. Mary doesn't have that benefit, but she doesn't need to. She doesn't know what's to come, but she still says yes. She does know that it's going to be a difficult thing. I mean, someone who wasn't married yet giving birth, that's already going to be hard. She knows that she's going to face a lot of questions, that she might face some rejection from family or friends or others who have known her. That was not an easy thing to do in those times, to have a, a child seemingly born out of wedlock. Maybe even her relationship with Joseph would be in question. Would he still stick around? She doesn't know. And even not knowing, she says yes. That is faith, right? We talk about faith being who you trust. That is trust in God. She says, yes. 
And then immediately we have this kind of switch in scene. As Mary hears, has this conversation with Gabriel, then Gabriel leaves. Mary immediately leaves to go and visit her relative, Elizabeth. Now, earlier in the Gospel of Luke, we have already met Elizabeth. Elizabeth is the mother of the person who would become known as John the Baptist, right? The primary witness to Jesus going on ahead of him, preparing the way of the Lord. This is his mother, who herself has had somewhat of a miraculous pregnancy, Uh, In her old age, she is conceived and would give birth to John. And she and her husband, it's already kind of a surprise. And then Mary comes to visit her as they're related. And as soon as Mary comes into the house and greets her, the unborn baby John, according to gospel, leaps within Elizabeth's womb. Knowing that this is going to be the mother of, of the one he is to witness about. And it's incredible what happens with Elizabeth. She feels the child within her leaping. It says in Scripture that she's overcome with the Holy Spirit. She cannot help but just proclaim for joy that Mary is here, this wonderful thing that God is doing. Like Mary, she doesn't know all the details, but she is just overcome with the joy of the Spirit. She is overcome with the desire to praise God and bless Mary and celebrate this thing that God is doing, both with her child and with Mary's. And as she shares with Mary what has happened, that John has leapt and this great movement of the Spirit is happening, happening, Mary responds with what has become known throughout Christian history as the Magnificat, the Song of Mary. It's one of the most famous biblical hymns of all time. And some of the words that we hear Mary say uh, in this Magnificat are probably familiar to those of you who have been following our Wednesday night worship services or anyone else who's familiar with Holden Evening Prayer. They're very similar because Holden is based on this Magnificat, right? My soul proclaims your greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices in you. You have looked with love on your servant here and blessed me all my life through. These are a form of the words that Mary begins her great hymn with and continues with this praising of God, this outgrowing of the Spirit, speaking of how wonderful God has been and the great things that God has done and will do through Christ, through Christ for the world. It's an absolutely beautiful section of the gospel text with all kinds of themes running through it, both from the very beginning of the story we have today with Gabriel and Mary all the way through the Magnificat. And there are so many different pieces that we could look at and pull out and have conversations about. But today what I really want to focus on is the theme of witnessing that we've already talked a little bit about in the service today. It's something that definitely is one of the many themes of this text. And it's also something that we as Lutherans sometimes tend to shy away from a little bit. Uh, We get a little bit uncomfortable with the idea of witnessing. At least I do, and I know some of you do as well. Maybe not all of you, but it's something that culturally we're not super uh, enthusiastic about all of the time. Many of us have this mental image when we think of witnessing, of of street corner doomsday prophets or passing out pamphlets door to door, asking people one one by one if they've accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior yet, right? This is that, that, that... idea that we often have when we think about what it means to witness. But while there are certainly elements of witnessing in each of those things, uh, it's not really the core of what that term means, even in a Christian context. Witnessing, at its very basic level, means to tell what you've seen or you've heard or you've experienced, right? It's really not that unlike what we think of when we hear of a a witness in a courtroom, is it? When you're called to be a witness in a trial or a court, you're called to tell the court your experiences. What did you see? What did you hear? What happened to you? 
What is your witness to those around you? And that's also what it means, really, in a Christian context. We're called to testify to one another, to testify to the world about what we witness God doing in our lives and in the lives of those around us. We're called to witness about the story of God that has impacted us in whatever way that might be. And there's a lot of different ways that that task of witnessing is accomplished. Even in our story today, in our gospel text today, there are a number of different forms of witness that we see being exemplified. Now, we have three main characters in this Luke text. We have Mary, we have Elizabeth, and we have Gabriel. And all three of them, in some way, shape, or form, witness in today's story. Now, Gabriel, he's at the very beginning of the story, mostly, and he's given this instruction to carry out a specific message to a specific person, probably the most traditional idea of what it means to witness, right? He's got something that he has to tell someone. He is the messenger. He is going to carry on that idea of witness to Mary. Elizabeth is a little bit different. When Elizabeth has that experience of John leaping within her, she's filled with the Holy Spirit and she proclaims what she experienced to Mary, right? She says, my child within me has leapt. She tells what she experienced along with all of this joy that comes with it. She's not just telling Mary, you know, God is doing this, that, or the other thing, but this is what I experience God doing right now, that the Holy Spirit is causing my unborn child to leap for joy. She is witnessing to Mary what she experiences God doing. And then there's Mary. Mary is, even here, a more complicated and nuanced form of witness. She has some of the same witness that Elizabeth does in that she has this magnificat of praising God, of speaking all of these wonderful things that she has experienced God doing and sharing them in a, in a spoken form. But there's also another way that Mary witnesses that I think is all the more powerful, all the more important. And that has to do with the fact that she said yes in the first place. What is that a witness to? That is a witness to the strong faith that she already had, all of the years that she'd been in relationship with God, coming to trust this God, right? If she hadn't had that trust built up, how could she have said yes in the first place? The fact that she was able to say yes is a witness to the love of God active in her life to this point. It is a powerful powerful form of witness that can't be duplicated just by sharing a story, right? You see it in the way that she chooses to live. You see it in the way that she's able to say yes to what God wants to do. The act of saying yes is a witness itself about the kind of person that she's become and what God has already done through her. In so many ways, our lives are a witness to what God has done to and for and through us. The way that we treat each other, the way that we sacrifice for each other, the way that we love one another is a witness to what God is doing through the gospel for those who are around us. It reminds me of a story uh, that I absolutely love about one of the early saints of the church. His name was Pacomius. Uh, this was in the very early times of the church. He was a, uh, a man who had been conscripted into the Roman army. And in those days, to be a conscript, a draftee in the Roman army was not somewhere where you wanted to be. You were not taken care of well. You barely had enough to eat. In fact, the, the, the Roman government was always worried that the, the, the draftees would run away. Uh, and so at night, they would keep them locked up uh, in order to prevent them from running away. And when Pacomius was, uh, was conscripted and was drafted, he was locked up in one of these, these, these military barracks uh, and he and his fellow soldiers were taken care of by a group of local Christians who brought them food, who brought them blankets, who made sure that 
they were safe and taken care of when even the Roman government wasn't doing that. And that had such an impact on, on this young man, Pacomius, because he was not familiar with the idea that someone who was not related to you would take care of you, would care enough about you that they would go out of their way to seek your good. It was a foreign concept to him. And so he promised himself that once he was done with the army, he would come back and learn a little bit about what it meant for these people to do that, these, these Christians. Why were they doing what they were doing? He ended up following through on that. And after his time in the army was done, he came back, became a Christian himself, and ended up being one of the leading monastics of his age, known as St. Pacomius today. Because of the witness of the lives of those Christians who touched his life, who were compassionate to him, the kingdom of God was built. Another story I remember. I think I might have mentioned him before, but I had a really good friend, John, who I went to high school with, who was diagnosed with brain cancer uh, his freshman year of college, my senior year of high school. Uh, and it was terminal brain cancer. Uh, he ended up dying that next year. But the year before his death, when he knew that was going to be his last year on earth, he spent that summer working at Bible camp with me. Spent that summer talking about God and about how God has done good things in his life, about how much God loves him and cares for him and wants the same for everyone. This was his last summer alive on earth. And he chose to spend it teaching people about how much God loved them. That is a witness to the love of God in his life that he would seek to do that. I still think about John all the time because that witness of love had such an impact on me. And if it had such an impact on me, I can just imagine the lives of all of the campers that he touched that year, the way that his life impacted all of us. He spoke witness to the gospel of God. And so coming back to our story here, as we celebrate the coming of the new covenant, as we read about the witness of Mary, Elizabeth, and Gabriel, I invite you to join me in examining our own lives and the way that we live, how that becomes a witness. What are the stories that fill us with such joy that we can't help but share them in word or deed? What are the ways that God impacts us that others around us can see too? This holiday season, may we all find a way of witnessing, of telling, of living our own Magnificat our own song of praise. May our souls magnify the Lord and may our spirits rejoice in God our Savior. Amen. Into the Into the shadows of the night Into this loveless place you came Lightened our burdens, eased our pain And made these hearts your home Into the darkness once again Oh, come Lord Jesus, come with your love to make us whole. Come with your light to lead us on, driving the darkness far from our souls. Oh, come, Lord Jesus, come. Into the longing of our souls, into Shine on us now your piercing light Order our lives and souls aright By grace and love unknown 
Until in you our hearts unite Oh, come, Lord Jesus, come Come with your love to make us whole Come with your light to lead us on Driving the darkness far from our souls Oh, come, Lord Jesus, come child, Emmanuel, hope of the ages, God with us, visit again this broken place, till all the earth declares your praise and your great mercy's own. Now let your love be We take time now to reflect on the many blessings God's given us, and in return, we give back to God in the many ways we're called to. Your offerings and tithes can be mailed in by check or through our online giving platform, Rebel Give. Just a reminder that Village of Hope is our second offering ministry partner, again, a way that we can help our neighbors who need shelter and food and clothes uh, and the great work that's led by Sandy Henham here in town. Uh, so second offering gifts can be made all month as well. Just a reminder, too, that we're in the midst of a card campaign. Uh, those of you who would like to, the address is here on the screen, where you can share a little bit uh, with um, our staff and our residents and, and those who are in the hospital uh, during the Christmas time. So go ahead and sp spread some cheer there, too, if you would. We're also in the final weeks of our Shine Your Light campaign, so an open invitation for any of you to give a donation to build up our reserve funds that we had to tap into earlier this year at the beginning of COVID-19. Right now, we're going to show you a Christmas video um, of our Christmas Eve, Christmas Under the Stars worship that we're going to host here at Calvary. We're in the season of Christmas. But one of the great joys that we get to, to celebrate is coming together as God's people, to hear the Christmas story read, to sing our favorite hymns and carols. This year, five of our congregations, Calvary Lutheran, First Lutheran, Lutheran Campus Ministry, Ardal Lutheran, and New Salem are coming together and hosting Christmas Under the Stars. And we invite you to come and join us. Welcome, my name is Pastor Pete. I'm the pastor over at Ardall Lutheran Church and we're gonna talk about parking for Christmas Eve because this is not a drive up service. We are actually gonna do a good old fashioned uh, circle around the bonfire. And follow the parking lot attendants, they'll show you where to park. Make sure you bundle up. Put on your big old parka, and because uh, it might be cold, bring some gloves. Don't forget to put on your mask. Hope to see you here. Hey, Pastor Jeremiah from Calvary here. When you come to our Christmas Eve joint services, maybe consider bringing a luminary that you can share with everyone. They're pretty easy to make and can be fun too. You can make them with a, either a paper bag or a bucket of water frozen outside. Either way, look forward to seeing you on Christmas Eve. 
I'm Pastor Emily Papke Larson with Lutheran Campus Ministry at Bemidji State University and Northwest Technical College. Um, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about these bags we'll have available for you. When you come in to our Christmas worship service, you can come over to the table and choose one of the bags. The numbers on the bags will correspond with the members of your family who will be taking communion at our worship service. Each of the bags will have a candle inside for each member of your family. It will have these small pre-packaged communion wafers and wine. Uh, and we also have gluten-free wafers available if you need them. Hi everyone, Pastor Janelle here, and I get to talk to you about where you can bring your offering on Christmas Eve. There will be gift boxes just like these with slits in the top that you can bring your offering. Again, if you'd like it to go to a certain church, you can find that gift box and place it in there. We're also going to make another box for the food shelf so that we can bless our partners too. So know that uh, when you gather sometime here on Christmas Eve, you can find this gift table and continue to bless God through your offerings. See you then. Hello, I'm Pastor Corey from First Lutheran here in Bemidji, and I get to talk about wood. So we're planning on having Christmas under the stars with a, a bonfire that we're gathered around, um, and we need some wood. So if you've got some some wood laying around that's you know not your best wood, but it's wood that we can burn, hopefully dry, uh, that would be wonderful. And you can bring it here to Calvary um, anytime between now and Christmas. And we're going to kind of stack them up uh, near this inside. So when you pull in the back here, you'll you'll find by the inside some wood pile that is started we're hoping not to block the buildings in uh, but we're uh, we'll get the wood gathered here and then we're actually having worship uh, over here with the bonfire we'll gather around the fire and have an awesome worship experience i can't wait to see you there Together with the whole church, let us now confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us turn our hearts and minds now to the power of prayer. Let's pray. Loving God, you've continued to journey with us as we have waited this Advent season. And that's not an easy task with anticipation uh, to try to be patient during this time of leaning in to how you are at work in our lives. So as we wait these final days, Lord, for you to again be born into our lives, may our waiting be fruitful and may all of our being be ready to rejoice. Lord, in your mercy hear our prayer. 
Lord, we wonder how you are at work in our lives, in our community, in our state, in our nation, and in this world. We ask that you continue to bless all nations, all people with your care. We pray for those torn apart by war or violence. We pray for those who are in need of clean water and shelter and food. We pray for those who are sick, those with AIDS, those with preventable diseases like malaria, and those with COVID-19. We ask God that as we watch and wait for you to see you at work in the lives of, of, of workers who continue to work and care for one another, bring your healing touch upon us all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, help us to stay awake and alert as we watch for you. We watch for you in the smiles of those in the grocery store, as we watch for you at the stoplight, as we watch for you and our neighbors and our friends. Help us to see Christ in the reflection of all people. We especially pray today, God, for those loved ones in our lives who are in need of your healing touch that they want to be filled with your Holy Spirit, filled with your renewal and healing. So hear us as we give voice to those now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And again, God, as we witness, like your disciples who were around that first Christmas, Help us to point to you at work in our lives. Help us give voice to how you show up in our worlds. Help all of creation continue to point and praise you for your marvelous works. Give us voices through song and prayer this Christmas season that we can celebrate your gifts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God, we know that death doesn't take a break. And even in these happy times, there's loneliness, sadness. And we pray for all of those who are suffering from a loss during this holiday season when have an empty chair around the Christmas table. May your promise and hope of the resurrection guide us and grant us peace that passes all understanding. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our vocations this week, Lord, in our mission, in our ministry, in our vo um, work and in our play, in our volunteering, Lord, may you be present. Fill us with such a wonder and awe this Advent season that we are open receivers of the gift of Christ again. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, over this Christmas holiday, we have multiple worship services for you to, to log into, so continue to check the website. We'll have lessons and carols. The women of ELCA is doing a blue Christmas. Concordia College is offering some worship opportunities, as well as here at Calvary. Um, we will have a Christmas Eve uh, virtual worship, as well as our Christmas Under the Stars. On the 27th, next Sunday, the Synod staff is leading us through a worship service. So many opportunities to worship together. I hope that you can find some time to worship God over this holiday season. And now, friends, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. As we're dismissed again today, we are going to go right into the, the time of confession and um, and trust you uh, and your family households uh, to share the gift of God's sacrament in the Holy Supper. So let's pray. God, at this time, we turn over our brokenness to you, that which separates us from you, that which limits us from seeing you and witnessing to you and your work in our lives. Take all the burdens, the stumbling blocks away from us so that we can fully see you and taste you in the sacrament of Holy Communion. 
May your forgiveness come and reign upon us. Renew us and restore us as your people again. In this meal, Lord, revive us and restore us so that we can show all people your great love born to us this Christmas. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, on the screen are the words of institution. Uh, go ahead and as a household, partake in this Holy Supper. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the wintry sky, joy of the Father, reach through the darkness, shine across the earth, send the shadows to fly. tragedies of time were no match for your love from great heights of glory you saw my story god you entered in and became He will 